me, I'll go with Carl Lewis. He was fantastic, but not as successful as my guest today. The most decorated female cyclist of all time. A combined 18 gold medals in Olympics, World Champs, Commonwealth Games. And Amirs, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. I went with peppermint tea. That's your... My favourite. Thank you. Oh, what a brew there. Now, what I like straight away, you're in pink. It's the well, pink ball test. I thought it was very fitting. I went for the brightest pink that I could find and generally the one shirt that fit as well. No, I like <laughs> it. Very good. Hey, now, what about why cycling? Growing up, were you playing other sports or you just wanted to get on the bike? I did all sorts of sports when I was a kid, but um, I followed my big brother into BMX as a youngster. Did that for a BMX number of years. BMX Bandits. Was yeah. it in spot Nicole Kidman? All over the BMX Bandits. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't do the flip, but... I stayed on the ground a little bit more, but um, ultimately in 1994 saw Kathy Watt um, win golf for Australia on the velodrome, and oh, that's what yes. kind of sparked my interest in that. And was that the one you wanted gold? And guess what? You got gold. I did. Four <laughs> Olympic Games. And what about the gold medal here in the in Athens, the 500 metre? 500 time trial, just two laps around the track as fast as you possibly can go from a standing start. 20 years of age, I ended up winning <laughs> in a world and Olympic record time. And um, what about the feeling getting on the podium? Podium, though you're hearing uh, uh, the... it, was, it was incredible you know like the podium is one thing the anthem is another uh, my race was actually two laps of the velodrome my victory laps was six my coach just couldn't get me off so, <laughs> <laughs> um, really great experience and a beautiful memory and as you can see the emotions um, were very hard to control that that green and gold on your shoulders is pretty special and it, it certainly helps you lift well why wouldn't it because of all the training and the hard work and you not always get to go because you broke a, a world record and an olympic record and the olympic record was uh, up, what, the race before or something? The rider before me broke the <laughs> Olympic record. Um, I had to ride a PV by three tenths, and by doing so, I rode a world and Olympic record to win my first Olympic gold. So you won the 500 metre. You're just thinking, yep. I'll do this for the next four Olympics. And what happened <laughs> next? Uh, well, BMX came into the Olympics, which unfortunately meant two medals had to come <laughs> out of cycling, and the 500 was one of them. So I had to refocus a bit more on the individual sprint, which is a bit more cat and mouse. Yeah. Someone else to worry about on the track, which made it a bit more difficult. No, and also talking about the tactics, though, over the years, you had the know thy enemy tactic. Can you yes. just elaborate a little? I like the tactical side of things. Sprinting is very, very tactical, and London was a big challenge because the, my biggest rival was Victoria Pendleton. She had been undefeated for six years internationally. Oh, so my coaching team brought about the Know Thy Enemy project, which was to get to know Vicky Pendleton enough to learn what I needed to do to improve myself I'm to beat it. her. Because yes. she wasn't going to get worse. I had to get no. better. And weren't you training against a, a male um, yes. cyclist as well? Yes. So we practiced the skill and the strategy with uh, my teammate Alex Bird. Um, and that's, that strategy was brought about by Gary West, my coach, Nick Fleischer, my sports scientist, um, Rick Shuttlesworth, a skill acquisition like specialist. Um, so for the three years we made this plan, we didn't use it internationally at all. I practiced it every day at training. So what would you do um, when you're actually in competition? So you, oh, you're I not practice, playing dead, but oh, no, you're no, actually no. going, oh, this I is the way. I practice plan uh, B, C, D, E, F, J, yeah. you know, just in case I couldn't pull off plan See, A. See, I used to do that, but I didn't have a plan A. Oh, so that's, that's a problem. That's pretty important, yeah. isn't it? You want to be gold medalist. Probably. <laughs> so tactics, gold medal, yeah. are planning, but also what we love about your career is your courage coming back from injuries. Oh, and obviously in 2008, yeah. yes. you basically broke your neck. I did. I had and a you're big back on the bike, fall. what, in 10 days later? How did that happen? Days. Uh, well, I needed the help of a self-adjustable portable clothes rack because I couldn't actually lean on the handlebars and support the weight of my own head. Um, so the portable clothes rack kept me upright and I just sat there and pedaled for the first couple of months and let my injury heal um, and with it, ultimately within seven months I swapped a neck brace for an Olympic silver. And quickly another little bit of a cricket uh, connection, Steve War Foundation, you yes. went on the ride. Yes, so Steve was a mentor in Beijing and London and he invited me on the ride after I retired in Rio. I've done it for three years now. Um, the longest rides I've ever done have been on the Steve War Foundation oh, ride. <laughs> um, Did he mention me? I'm quite close mates with him. <clears throat> no, he didn't actually. Oh, okay. uh, you might need to take that up with All him. All right, well, let's finish on a positive. Um, <laughs> you're due, your first child I will am. be in an Olympic year. I and end. I think we've got a little Instagram photo of you still riding. Yeah, my How partner exciting. Nick and I, we're expecting our first bubby. Um, obviously, he's a Kiwi, I'm an Aussie, so we're battling more over those colours rather than the green and blue, the blue and pink, sorry. Um, but I rode the Steve War ride, six months pregnant, um, got 350k of the 750k done and was all supporting kids with rare diseases like Steve does with the foundation. His lovely wife Lynette as well, but 
I like riding and at the moment I can still do it, so I may as well keep doing it. Well, on behalf of everyone here at Channel 7, good luck with Thank the birth you. of your first child. Thank and you. Anna Mears, you are a true champion. Thank you. Back to you, Mel. <laughs>